Hello guys, this is Tosha from the Tosha Poundstone Show. Sorry that I'm late. I was taking care of some business and plus I was trying to also let my allergies uh, set in. I started a group chat, which is going to be on your right. So if you guys have any comments, you can still maybe not do it in the live stream, but you can always click in the link down below. If you don't see it, let me know in the comment section below. Um, so let's get started. So chapter six of Orchard, right? So it's called The Ringer. Orchard had thought about her birth parents many times. She also thought of what they had done for a living. They could have been spies from a secret organization. Obviously, they couldn't talk about it. She didn't know if her adoptive mom knew what they had done for a living. It ended up being that it wasn't true that they were spies. Yeah, so I, you know, when you don't know your birth parents very well, you tend to come up with elaborate things. Maybe they were president. Maybe they were this. Maybe they were that. So I came up that they were spies with this from a secret organization. Um, they did not turn out to be spies. They're just normal, average people, right? Um, so did her birth mother know that she had cerebral palsy along with her other health issues? Because when I was four, she was still carrying me around. So I'm not sure if she knew or not, but uh, I can guarantee that she probably knew a little bit of my health issues. Uh, maybe not all of them, but she knew a little bit, I think. Um, she had high blood pressure plus a weird disease called Leukemia. Uh, this has something to do with your bloodstream, she thought. Uh, it is a made-up disease. I don't know. Well, no. Yeah, leukemia. I don't know if there is such a thing called leukemia. For the book's sake, I'm just going to go for it so I don't have to tell you all my health issues. Uh, but that's just let's just go with that. Don't ask because she didn't really know herself. Society told her that she was courageous. I hate when they say that I'm courageous. I'm not courageous. I'm just an over average person. Like, why does a, someone from a disabled spot, right, have to be so courageous, right? She never thought of herself as a fighter because this was just how life was, a normal course to her life. This is what happens when women aren't careful with their bodies while the baby is in the womb. Getting deals with being deals with bad cards in life and just you know, you know, just make the most of it. So I guess what I was trying to say was um because I was dealt so many bad cards, right? That it's kind of hard, you know, life is kind of hard, but you know, it is what it is. You're, you know, you're born with whatever ethnicity you is because your parents came together, you know, they slept in the bed, they happened to get pregnant. That's it, you know. Uh okay. So yeah, for women though, you have to be careful with your bodies. If you smoke, if you drink, if you do drugs, you know, smoke, drink, do drugs. Yeah, if you smoke, drink, and do drugs, one or the other, or maybe all three, your baby's going to have a problem with it because whatever you put into your body, it goes to your womb straightforward. I think there's a misconception with women who think, oh, it's not going to harm the baby because the baby is separate somehow. No, the baby is not separate from you. The baby is a part of you right? It's in the womb. It's being protected by a uh, placenta. That's true to protect the baby, but it doesn't mean that anything outside of whatever you put into your body is going to protect it because of that umbilical cord, right? The umbilical cord goes from your stomach into the placenta to the baby's tummy, right? The baby tummy. And so whatever you, if you drink, right? If you do all that, it goes straight into the baby. And why it's developing, it's going to develop a natural 
It's going to develop whatever the side effects of whatever that med is. But because they're so vulnerable, they're not going to be able to fight it off. And you could kill yourself too because of just how unhealthy that actually is. So women, be careful. You know, yeah. So yeah, whatever you have to the baby, they will live with it for the rest of their life, right? When you're born with something, you're going to deal with it until the day you die, right? So it is 24-7. So she lived with it 24-7. So others who didn't live with it never comprehended what she went through on a day-to-day -day basis. Or she never saw what others saw in her or how she continued to live with hope. She was an inspiration, but she didn't think so. I don't really think I'm an inspiration. But a lot of people believe that I am, I guess. So... I guess I could say that I'm helpful, inspirational. I don't know about that. Uh, she was an inspiration, but she didn't think so. Understand that this that understand the disabled rather than mistreat them. So yeah. So if you have a child who has autistic, who is you know has schizophrenia, autism, something like that, rather than actually trying to take them oh you know trying to say they don't have it understand them talk to them you know give them time because they're not gonna some of you your children out there will never be able to live by themselves at all ever so you have a child and they will never be able to not be what you you know maybe you think oh they're gonna go off and do you know college you know an organ or something they may not be able to do that. So just be with them, understand them, just try to make sure that when they are, the more they're understood, the more they feel like they're loved, right? If you don't talk to them, they don't think that they are in love, you know, the, that they're loved. And some of them will never have children of their own. So you may never have grandkids because they're just, their mental state doesn't believe that they, you know, that it doesn't go that far to, you know, sexual behavior. So, yeah, a lot of people take advantage of that. You know, a lot of people get art, right? A lot of get people get DV because their the mental state isn't, you know, what up to par. So you're like, oh, well, I'll beat it out of them, right? Or I will do this, or I'll do that, right? It doesn't help, and it doesn't work. It just makes them feel like. They are not wanted, you know? So be very careful how you treat your children, disabled or not disabled. But, you know, if you are not disabled, yeah, you tend to have a little bit more love, I guess. But it also is that they don't feel like, you know, you love all your siblings, right? Or you love whoever you love, right? They may have PSD, from something that you did to somebody else and then they get traumatized and you think, oh, well, it doesn't affect you. Yeah, it does affect them, you know? It really, truly does. It affects everybody. Make them feel welcome and not feel dumb. They already feel like that already. So when someone says that they aren't the brightest bulb of the chandelier, it will affect their day-to-day performances so yeah so if you say oh you're just stupid all the time right they're gonna believe that they're stupid and they're not gonna want to do anything and so when they're like oh so what are you doing today well i feel good today right so i can tell you that you know i can then state what i'm doing but if you keep telling them that they're stupid they're dumb they're this or that they're not gonna you know they're gonna keep thinking that they're too stupid and dumb to do anything. So when you expect them to do something and they say, oh, well, well I'm not doing anything. And you kind of like figure out, huh, why? Well, because you keep saying stupid stuff like that, you know? Orchard had learned to walk, thanks to her mother. Her medical history was excellent. Daffodil had always made sure that Orchard's health was excellent. At the time, Orchard hadn't appreciated the help that she had gotten when she did. She was glad for the push now, but at the time, it was just a hassle. The time when she was on crutches, she herself did the next part. Yeah, so my mom did teach me how to walk, right? And how to take my medicine, how to, you know, do that. 
which was excellent. That was the good, the great, the greatest part that she could ever do was doing that. Um, other than that, you know, it was a lot of up and down, ups and downs. That's true, but uh, you know, for her to teach me how to walk and everything. Yeah, I just felt like it was just another chore because I wanted to just wake up one day and not have to do exercises and stretches and all that stuff. But for me, it's not like that. You know, I have to do my exercises. I have to do my stretching. I mean, some people do exercises and stretching just to keep their body healthy. But for me, I have to do a little bit extra just to walk for the day or maybe for an hour or something. Who knows? I don't know. But it's not like the normal way you just wake up just to exercise. You could just get up out of bed, walk around. You don't even have to do exercise. You could just get up and walk. For me, you know, it takes a little bit of time, which I don't like. Uh, the time when, yeah, she was next part. She learned to be on two crutches, then to one, then to zero. Yeah, so I taught myself how to get off crutches. I would practice my standing because I didn't want to be on crutches. I didn't want to have to look sloppy, I guess, um, look like I needed extra help, right? So I felt like the crutches were sloppy, right? That I wasn't trying hard because everybody around me didn't have crutches. So why do I need crutches, right? So I practiced really hard to make sure that I didn't have to use crutches again. Uh, it was an accomplishment, all right? It turned old and stale after a while. She needed something new to do, a new accomplishment. Her sister had wanted crutches because of all the tension that her older sister got. Her brother, Drew, had gotten everything he ever wanted, so he was good. In the end, Orchard didn't want to contact him anymore. So, yeah, so when I left, I didn't want anything to do with him. Uh, for my sister, Daisy, well, I'm not entirely sure if I want to keep talking to her or not. But, um, I mean, I talked to her off and on, but not on a day-to-day -day basis, you know. Um, everybody else I don't really contact at all, you know. Bartholomew, um, Aaron, I don't talk to them. I mean, it's not their real names. I just, you know, but still, I don't talk to them. So, yeah, so each accomplishment that I do come, becomes old very quickly for me. You know, so as soon as I did my accomplishment of my crutches, I said, yeah, that's, you know, I need something new. I need something different. So I decided that I wanted to go to do driving. So the next part of this chapter is that me learning how to drive. Right. So. Uh, yeah, so Daisy was always jealous of me for all the attention that I got even though it wasn't really attention, right? But she felt it like it was. Uh, yeah, so she didn't know if Daisy kept in touch with Drill. She doesn't. She doesn't like Drill at all. Um, if she, but if she didn't, then I didn't, then she didn't blame her. Yeah, I didn't blame her, you know. Orchard knew that much. Um, Orchard always wanted to learn how to drive. She called her auntie Teeny and told her about this. She and Charlotte both agreed that it wouldn't do any harm for her to learn. They actually never thought that I would actually get. Um, so when I did the the driving, people, you know, they're like, "Oh yeah, no, people will drive for her, so she, it wouldn't hurt her to practice, right? To learn because she's not really learning. She's just." Or, you know, they're teasing her by with her brain, right? So, or just showed them that she was serious. How? Huh? Well, with all these, all these simple steps, of course. Of course, yeah. They, you know, they just, when they go into a driving school, they put their foot on the gas pedal and on the brake. So they know how to do this with their ankle. I don't know how to do that. So technically, I will... I will not be able to do that. Um, but I didn't, I still don't know how to do that. So I drive with hand controls. So I had to find a school 
that would teach me how to use hand controls and that's expensive because it's out of the ordinary, right? So call the disabled driving school, learn to drive. That was a two main steps, right? Wow, this was a short list, easy peasy. Hmm, well, what was miss what was missing? Aha, uh -huh, light bulb. She would have to search online first. Her aunt and Charlotte didn't know anything about this topic. Orchard went to work and found a person. You know, there are only a handful of disabled driving schools around the country. Yeah, in California, there's only one driving school in all of California for disabled driving. There's one in Kansas, I believe, and then there's one, I believe, in Ohio. I think every country, every state, every state has at least, I believe, one disabled driving school, but mostly it's for rehabilitation. It's not because, you know, I was born this way. I'm not being rehabilitated. So it's a different, it's, it's different, you know. So you have to learn how to do the driving for them already being disabled rather than being turned into someone who's disabled, you know? So it's across the country, around the country. Most of them are rehabilitation centers, a place to get back your motor skills. When you don't have the motor skills to begin with, people look at you strangely. Like if you weren't in an accident, then why are you like that? What really happened? You are a fake. Well, this was where Frank stepped into the picture. Frank was my driving instructor. So I left his name in, you know, because that was his role name. And so, yeah, so if you're born disabled, people don't understand being born disabled unless you have somebody who was born disabled in your family. But other times when somebody is becoming disabled, then it's a different story. Then like, okay, well, she was like this or he was like this before, but suddenly he got sick or something like that and turned into something like that, right? So he was an accredited disabled licensed driver. Well, first things first, call the company and see what happens. On the phone, Orchard was told what types of services that he provided. Well, that's cool. He would evaluate her and her skills. He also wanted 500 gems for this, you know, money. He wanted $500 to do the evaluation and do the driving. What, gems? how dare he ask for this? How dare he, the little geezer, scam art, scam artist, right? Oh, well, if she wanted to learn this, she was going to have to take this first step. You know, here we go, it's roller coaster time. All right, Orchard was pumped about this. She was super stoked, aha. Uh -huh. Mm, sounds like she was going to a football game. I know. I sound like I'm going to tryouts or something. Tryouts start at 11 a.m. sharp. Okay, girls? So get into your hoochie mama clothes and get your blondes or brunettes, right? Okay. I always think, you know, because cheerleaders have to have these outfits that they look like hookers and that they're always blonde and brunette. Very little African Americans in there, and very little Asians. Just mostly blonde and white, right? Mostly blonde and white. They do have some brunettes, right? Or oh, unless you dye your hair like a brunette color, if it's not natural, then yeah, you know. But I always thought cheerleaders were fake and shallow, um, because of how they portrayed. You know, that's a stigma right there. That's a discrimination and a stereotype right there. I know I have to get out of it, but then again, I don't know any cheerleaders, nor do I hang out with any cheerleaders. So I don't know how, you know, I know they're normal, regular women, but I don't know what types of stuff they do outside of cheerleading. So I'm not sure how smart they are or how ignorant they are. All I can say is that to me, the looks are, that's what kills it, right? So if you are... A knockout in your 20s and you're in some in your 30s, then you know you're, you know, get out of that while you can, right? So when you're a teenager to in your 20s, you know, have all the fun you can because in your 30s, you know, you start to feel your age a little bit and your looks are just not as stunning as when you were a teenager. 
and in your early to close to your late 20s, right? You start to develop being old, you know, your wrinkles, your imperfections start to show faster rather than, you know, in your 20s. So you could be stunningly gorgeous and you get all these gigs and stuff. But yeah, after a while, you have to find a different job. And if cheerleading is all you know, I mean, yeah, you can be a cheerleading coach, but I don't know how much that actually pays, especially if you're, you know, doing all that, you know, bra rah, rah stuff, you know? So good. Glad we, we know the rules. Hey, back to earth. Okay. Back down to earth, you know, like back down to earth, you know, they, this is driving lessons, not cheerleading. No one will be doing the twerking, which is dumb unless you want a man to tap it. Yeah, I always thought twerking was a stereotypical black thing, right? Because black women started to twerk, right? The butt shaking. I always thought that they were trying to do cat calls. So if you booty shake, you know, a guy's going to come over and spank it, right? Because he thinks that you're trying to have them you know, have the women talk to the guy. So if you shake your butt, they, you know, a guy's going to try to come over there and touch it, you know? So that's how I think twerking is. Uh, yeah, anyway, she was ready. He arrived at the apartment and introduced himself to Orchard. Joy was at work at the, uh, Joy was at work at the time. Cool, okay, what's next? Frank's explained, that the first part of the evaluation was to do a maze puzzle on paper to see how our cognitive abilities were. So yeah, so like how my motor skills was, right? My functioning. She had to stay within the line or next to it, but not cross it because Orchard wanted another life. You know, so sort of like a, a game boy or game system, right? So. If you go over a certain line, then you're going to die and you're going to lose, right? So I think of it like that. She she didn't know if anyone else could get another life. So yeah, so if I didn't do it, I felt like I was going to lose 500 points. And because I lost 500 points, I might not be able to be revived because the fact of the matter is, you know, everybody doesn't get an extra life because it's not a Mario game, right? It's just your one life that you have. Sorry, getting my getting my water. My throat's getting a little dry. Okay. Okay, so yeah. So, okay, so this is Okay, it gets the first step Orchard is the cognitive test, Frank instructed. There is a who, what, when, where, and why. The ha huh is even more ha huh because with the extra side of ha, huh, right? Because I didn't know what why would you need to be evaluated? Most of the time when you drive you go when you pay them money, they say, Okay, come back at this time, right? And you get in the car and you just use your feet. But for me I had to go to a test. Right? So I'm just like, huh? You know, more huh? And uh, extra side of huh? Why do I need to be evaluated? You know? Uh, I need to test your brain to see if you can pass this test. The thing, the thing should take no more than 45 minutes. So the whole evaluation was 45 minutes, right? So there's like 10, 15 minutes of the cognitive test. Then there was the extra 30 30, roughly 30 to 35 minutes of the actual driving part of it. Okay, so this thing, yeah, okay. Okay, Orchard grown in her head. What a test. This wasn't school. She deliberately stopped going to school just so she wouldn't have to take any more tests. Now I'm back in school, and yeah, it's going to be a kicker when I have to do my final exam, you know? Now, this guy here, she didn't know, you know, now for 
Now this guy here, she didn't even know what her to take a test. She didn't even know to have somebody take have a take to th this test. What is wrong with this man? What is wrong with his brain? Did she did it fall out and he didn't know where it was? Where did she drop it? Like, okay, so talking about myself, like, okay, so if I'm gonna take a test, right, and I didn't prepare practice for it, how am I gonna pass, right? What's wrong with his brain? Did he know that she didn't know? Like, did you know that he did he? No, I didn't really stop taking tests so that I don't have to continue with this, right? Um, so I have to find out where I dropped my brain so I can get it back and take this test. So I wanted to say, quick, let's go find it. Man, was he going to have to turn around and or would, would I have to turn him into a burrito or something? Come on, man, really? This part, this first part is for you to fill out. It's a puzzle. I want you to trace the line. Do not hit the sides of the maze or you will fail. So like basically, if I did not pass the first part of the test, he will determine that I can't drive. That's a bummer. You know, F. He was a stickler. Okay, Orchard, you got this. Orchard, fill, Orchard, fill it out. Okay, here is, okay, some of us here, you almost hit the lines. You passed, but barely. I don't think your comprehensive isn't very good. We can work on it. Yeah, man, stupid out. Because if you show that you're clean, you are more focused. But for me, I had to chase the line. Sometimes when I chase a line, I don't see where it's supposed to go. So... I didn't have a ruler or anything on me, so I had to state uh, how I was. So I, I barely was able to pass and take the driving test because of just how I traced the line, right? The line is for me to, uh, to see where I was at. Ojo was going blank in head. Well, it was supposed to be black in her head, but I changed it to blank. It's like, who are you? Who are you to tell me what my perception is? Like, okay, that's fine. You can tell me, but, you know, I'm not going to take it because guess what? You can't tell me what to do, you know, doing that little African-American hair rub. Mm, girl, I understand, right? Now, uh, Hocha was a little hothead when somebody told her something that she couldn't help yeah, so I, I get like a little bull, right? When someone's like, oh, Toshi, you don't know how to do this. I take that challenge by the horns and I make sure that I can ride that bull. So after now, after I write your score, we'll go to the car and we will see how well you do there. And that's the main thing I wanted to do. I didn't want to do this little cognitive test. But I see why he does it. So if you start to drive, you will, like, know what to do, right? So let's see here. Well, now, this was more like it, her kind of speed. Orchard led, was led to the car. Frank showed Orchard how she would drive with the hand control. So I thought he was going to show me how to do it. But he actually wanted me to learn how to do it, which is a good thing. Uh, yeah, Frank showed Orchard how she would drive with the hand controls. Since Orchard's legs weren't strong, she just she could just get in the in a car and drive along around like other people. So since my legs were not strong and I used the hand controls, I just drive normal. It looks normal. People don't see the hand controls, you know. So. She had to master this for her own sake. Yeah, it was really for me than anybody else. You know, I wanted to prove that I could do it, but I think I also really truly wanted to prove it to myself rather than anybody else. Ocha felt electrified. She was free. She was going to show Frank that she could do this. She felt mighty free. Now, all she had to do was convince her auntie that she really wanted this. So she 
called her up and she was able to get her lessons. Like, I'm like, yes, I'm finally able to get my freaking lessons because I passed the first part of the exam. Now he just needs to get paid for him to uh, teach me how to drive. The sweet, the sweet auntie always looking out for her best interest. After, after she got the hang of it, it wasn't that hard. Yeah, it wasn't hard at all. Why her auntie didn't have to worry about what was going to happen to her, like something bad was around the corner. Things got underway and she got her lessons. Yeah, so that's chapter seven, I believe. And so, yeah, being with the hand controls, right, it's very difficult because if you're with somebody else, they're not going to basically judge you, I guess. But I felt like I so wanted to have no disability to be normal, right? I wasn't going to be able to do that. So I was able to finally get my lessons because... My aunt, you know, Sharon didn't actually believe that I could do it. So every time someone tells me I can't do it, I actually try to make sure that I can do it. So I was able to get my lessons in, right? I was also able to pass my driving test, right? And I just feel like, hey, look, because I was able to do it, you know, that's why I don't really care for these people that supposedly have my best interests at heart because when I was promised a car, I didn't get my car. I was promised to go on vacation and I didn't get it, right? So with that being said, I was able to do most of this by myself except for the money part, right? But my aunt was very upset when she found out that I was actually doing it. She didn't trust Frank after that because she thought he was driving me and showing me so that if I ever did take the driving exam for the DMV, I would not be able to pass it because she felt like, well, she, he tried his best. You tried your best. Okay, you know, something like that. So the thing about that is, I was super thankful for their help with getting me the lessons and learning to drive. But it's, everything comes with a double-edged sword. The sword on one side was clean and smooth, you know, like you buffed it out, right? And on the other side, it's not yet conformed. You know, you have to do one side you know, with the other. And I just felt like, you know, with whatever is, is. But I want her to be more enthusiastic about me driving instead. She kept being negative, right? The, my family members kept being as negative as possible. So I'm just like, okay, well, I don't need your help. But with that, I was able to figure out what was my most what's my strengths and what my weaknesses were. So I am truly happy that um, I got my license without anybody's help. So it's been like a, a running theme in the family that whenever I ask for something and they don't think I can do it, right? Like the driving and the getting a job, right? I didn't, they know I could get a job. It was just that they thought I needed to go through a disabled agency to get it, you know. So I'm trying to break the mold out the box so that I can then uh, do what I wish, you know. So now I have a car. I had to get the car myself because she, you know, she offered to buy me one when I passed and it never happened. So for like two years, I think I begged her to get me a car and she kept saying, well, save up, save up, save up, right? So I just finally was like, okay, forget it, you know? You don't really think that I could get do this to begin with because when Frank said she's doing fine, I'm not doing anything, she was livid because I was uh, capable of doing it by myself and she didn't want anything clearly to happen to me. But she also, I believe, didn't think 
that I would be able to do it by myself. I she knows that I'm capable of doing it, but you know, my brain might think, oh, I'm capable of doing this. And it turns out I can't. So it's just along those lines, you know. It's more like just having her keep saying stuff like that, that she's gonna help, she's gonna do this, she's gonna do that, and she never does it, right? Like I was supposed to go on vacation.